Welcome to our video channel. Don't forget to subscribe for more great railway videos. Selamat datang di channel video kami. Jangan lupa subscribe untuk update video-video terbaru kami. A new breed of locomotives is rolling down the railways of the world. Revolutionary technology has overcome traditional barriers to produce trains unlike any before. Super diesels pull mile-long trains. High-speed locomotives cover miles in mere seconds. And trains of the future that will travel using levitation. Each super train is a product of challenge and innovation, begun decades ago, when great steam locomotives ruled the rails. By the 1950s, the diesel locomotive had become the reigning king of the rails. While the first diesel engines were small in size and horsepower, they were tremendously efficient when it came to fuel consumption and labor costs. These diesels could travel about 750 miles on 1,000 gallons of fuel, require only one operator, and be turned around after service in a very short period of time. Over the decades, diesel locomotives continued to evolve, and with the improvements came the super diesels of today. With names like Dash 9s, SD80 Max, and AC 6000s. Not as glamorous as Big Boy and Challenger, Today's diesel locomotives are far more efficient than the great steam engines. Integrated with computers, satellite navigation, and digital systems, these super diesels are propelling railroads into a new era of technology. All diesel locomotives are, in a sense, no more than an electrical power plant on wheels. A diesel engine powers an electrical generator. The electricity is transmitted to electric motors on each truck, which drive the wheels. Simple. But now add a dozen other systems. And what was simple becomes massively complex. I think the biggest design challenge in designing modern-day locomotives is not so much the technology itself, but the complexity of the product. This locomotive contains over a dozen computers, and it's not simply just a collection of individual components, but it really is a set of, of highly integrated subsystems. In the wide open spaces of North America, hauling freight has become the railroad's biggest challenge. A locomotive pulling a mile-long freight train is locked in a titanic struggle against immense powers of force and resistance. It's a precarious battle against inertia and momentum requiring delicate control of awesome levels of horsepower. Now a new fleet of super diesels has taken to the tracks that is stronger and more powerful than ever before.
The great diesel locomotives are capable of hauling massive amounts of heavy cargo in trains of 100 cars and more. Freight train handling has become a science. An immense mobile equation based on horsepower and weight. Locomotives can be thought of as building blocks, power units with varied horsepower ratings. They can operate independently or be coupled together. Connected with electrical lines, they work in tandem, controlled by one conductor in the lead locomotive. This modular design makes calculating the number of locomotives needed for a train a matter of simple arithmetic. Most older units are capable of hauling 1,500 tons of freight each, while super diesels are capable of pulling over 2,000 tons. For instance, an average train of 4,500 to 6,000 tons would require four older locomotives to pull it. The same load would require only three super diesels. This results in fewer locomotives to move the same amount of material, as well as a savings in labor and equipment costs. How about a mile long coal train? Nothing to it for today's high horsepower diesels. Of course, you must also figure the grade of the route, curves, and necessary speed. These factors all add resistance to the load and vastly complicate the equation. While horsepower can always be increased by adding more locomotives, the principal challenge facing today's designers is in conveying the horsepower to the rails. The locomotive uh, operates on steel rails with steel wheels, and the actual contact patch that it sits on is, is only about the size of a small coin. This locomotive here with six axles has 12 wheels, so you can imagine the entire locomotive sitting on something about the size of 12 coins. And so really the trick is being able to transfer the horsepower down to the rail through that contact patch. And that's accomplished by uh, aggressively controlling wheel slip. The critical moment for a locomotive is starting a train rolling. It's a titanic tug of war that pits a locomotive's power against cargo weighing up to 20 million pounds. If its wheels slip, the locomotive loses. Wheel slip burns up equipment, shorts out electrical systems, and makes pulling a train impossible. Preventing wheel slip is a technical feat that requires delicate control over awesome levels of pulling power. Onboard computers monitor power output while another not-so-high-tech method is employed. For years, locomotives have relied on sand blown onto the rails by hoses in front of the wheels to help adhesion. A typical locomotive may carry a ton of sand and dispense it as needed to control slippage. So starting a freight train rolling is similar to getting an automobile moving when it's stuck in snow and ice. This super diesel is one of today's best. It can reach 70 miles per hour and has the power to start a 5,000-ton train. 
It's the SD-80 Mac, about 80 feet long, almost 16 feet tall, and weighing in at about 420,000 pounds. It carries 6,000 gallons of diesel fuel and is capable of putting 5,000 horsepower down to the rails. With a maximum braking effort of 96,000 pounds, it is one of the most advanced locomotives. All of these advancements are aimed at avoiding railroad disasters of the past. Today's super diesels have close to 100,000 pounds of braking power. It is the result of new brake systems on the cars. At the Railroad Transportation Technology Center, they're developing ways to increase the level of braking power even further for trains of the future. Here they are testing the difference between old-style air brakes and newer electric braking. Electric braking sets the brakes on each car of the train within seconds. Older air braking resulted in a delay that would take a train several miles to stop. All of the locomotive's integrated systems are controlled and monitored in the cab, the nerve center of the train. The gauges and handles that yesterday's engineers worked have been replaced by computers and digital displays. You don't drive super trains, you pilot them. The diesel today is a high-tech machine. Even back in the beginning, when General Motors was, was pumping out six, seven, eight, nine units a day, they were saying that pulling diesels off an assembly line was like pulling submarines off an assembly line. They were that complicated. But that was before the day of the computer, the day of a lot more automatic controls. Back then, fans were driven by belts. Today, they're driven by individual motors. It's an altogether different machine inside, even though it looks somewhat the same as it does on the outside. Even with all the computer and high-tech integration of today's locomotives, working on these monsters is still a back-breaking job. At the Santa Fe shops in Barstow, California, people work around the clock to repair locomotives as they come in for service and inspection. Each of the locomotives has a scheduled inspection every 92 days. And once on the rack for service, the locomotive is fueled, sanded, all fluids checked, and then cleaned. There's even a locomotive wash, which is very similar to your neighborhood car wash. It is turned around and ready for the road in about two hours. If more extensive work is needed, the locomotive is pulled into the garage. Here, changing a three-ton wheel set can be accomplished in about as much time as it takes to tune up an automobile. Up. 
Safety is the most critical of all considerations when working around locomotives, because when injuries do occur, they are usually serious.